All right, day eight. Let's see what we've got going on. Chad W. Whistle Pig Nine Siren Song. Haven't had this yet. Let's go. So let's jump right in like we usually do. How do I know Chad W? Well, Chad, I don't think he'd mind me saying this. If he does, then I'll figure it out later. Chad and his wife, Sarah, are the owners of Garage East Meter. And I met Chad through craft beer uh, back when the Tampa scene was crazy. Like, you know, 100 person, 200 person, 300 person lines to cycle, angry chair, um, all those type of places. And um, obviously met as he was starting to open the meadery and then kind of just took up from there our friendship. And I can't honestly say enough to honestly, he's given me a lot of perspective on things and given me the opportunity to try uh, mead and also try bartending mead, which is fun. It really is, honestly. It's, it's pretty low stress, pretty chill. So Chad, thank you. I know the Whistlepig series, uh, the Boss Hog series is near and dear to your heart. So I know this is super heartfelt. Thank you so much. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pour. So while I'm swirling and waiting for this thing to open up, the age on this thing is unknown. It does come in at 111.5 proof and it's finished in Nectar Creek and scratched to Nero barrels, which I understand to be a, a Greek thing. And it's supposed to have a lot of fig, a lot of that kind of notes to it. Honestly, never had anything finished in either of those. Probably never actually heard of any of those until today. Uh, well, I'd seen this release before, but it, I didn't really think much of it. And I'm excited to get into it because honestly, I don't know what to expect here at all. So nice color, beautiful color. Let's go to the nosing. Right off the bat, it's unique. I mean, when I say unique, it's it's got this underpinning. It's almost like a gin flavor, to be honest with you. There's so much fig and there's so much herbal and herbaceousness to it. And that kind of gives way a little bit to kind of some leathery notes, which is really nice. And then it's an odd thing to say, but there's almost like an oil smell, but not like tar oil, but like cooking um, Greek type oil, which makes sense. I just told you these barrels are tied to Greek spirits, so, and Greek things. Oh man, that is easily the most unique nose I've ever smelled in my life on a, on a whiskey. And I used to think that might've been barrel seagrass, but this one just blows barrel seagrass out of the water. All right, let's get into this, tasting wise. That's an explosion, just like the nose. I'm gonna tell you right now, right off the rip, if you don't have a taste for like the herbaceous floral, uh, almost junipery, almost gin-like uh, flavors. And this one may not be for you necessarily, but it is extremely unique. And it, it's not without a little bit of fruit component behind it slightly too. Um, getting maybe a hint of what could be a little cherry and orange. It's, it's not the primary flavor by any stretch of the imagination, but let's go for a second sip here. This one leans to me as like one of those after dinner type drinks, almost a, an aperitif style to be honest with you. It's actually very interesting and unique. I dig it. Now, I could only see where I'd probably want a one ounce pour of it because it's just so unique. And I want to drink it when I probably drank everything else I wanted to for the night because I'm not sure what's going to happen after this one, to be honest with you. Um, it, may, it may be one of those ones that kind of takes your palate over a little bit. But let's talk a little bit about the mouthfeel on it. The mouthfeel is a good medium finish. It gives a nice coat to the tongue, somewhat in the gums. Comes back down the throat with a little hug at 111 proof, which is nice. That's what I want. And otherwise, just a medium to long true finish. Maybe even with a little mint at the end. I don't know. Third sip, and then we'll go ahead and close this out. Yeah, there definitely is a mintier character to it that I think is starting to be, more, be a little more prevalent. And I think that's the culmination of all those figs, all those other spices, everything else. You know, it's just now dawning on me that this is a rye. But again, when I say mint, I'm not thinking traditional mint dill, although it starts to get out that way on second and third sip. This is almost from that additional barrel process, whatever they did there, because it's it's really a sweeter profile, spearminty almost. Um, but it does have a little bit of those minty. So uh, kudos to Whistlepig for stepping out and saying, let's try something really, really different here. I mean, I know they try to push the envelope with this series in general with some of the other releases they've had, but 
This is very wild, very different. I enjoy it. Chad W, thank you so much for sharing this with me. I can't honestly, you know, thank you enough for everything uh, you've done in terms of like exposing me to some whiskeys as well. You know, certainly you're willing to share all the time, which we talk about all the time is the point of this, where it's have a pour and make a memory, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>